I'm Josh, as uh, Yvonne mentioned. And, and yes, today we'll be talking through the benefits of uh, Trend Micro Cloud One uh, workload security um, versus uh, deep security on-prem. Uh, so we're gonna kind of run the gamut here. Uh, we'll do a little bit of a refresher, have have some stories around SaaS, my, my journey sort of uh, in, in cloud thus far, you know, some of my experiences um, that I've had in my career. Luckily, you know, lucky, lucky to have some of those experiences, honestly. Um, learned a lot. So, um, yep, I'm Josh. Um, one of my, you know, idols here, Paul Blart, as he once said, I didn't choose security, security chose me. Um, I've been through a ton of roles in IT, um, from help desk roles all the way to, you know, automation engineer, sysadmin type, and, and now I'm at Trend. My, my last company I was at for about eight, eight and a half years was a, a rather large healthcare uh, supply chain company here in uh, Columbus, uh, where I'm located. I am a Great Lakes SE uh, for Trend Micro currently. Um, big, big sports fan. I love the Cavs. They're my favorite. So I know people, you know, may try to fight me on this, but, you know, I'm the guy with the microphone. LeBron James is the greatest to ever play the game. We're just going to get that out of the way first. Um, I'm, a, I'm big into 3D printing as well outside of outside of technology and security. So if you ever want to talk about sports, you know, music, um, 3D printing um, outside of security, hit me up. My info is right there. Look me up on LinkedIn too. I'm there as well. So jumping into it, um, we're going to be covering kind of just a plethora of information around SaaS migrations and sort of the de decision tree that, you know, it goes along with, with the, you know, these, these questions, right? So we'll talk about operational overhead. We'll talk about compliance obligations and, and the cost of running deep security manager, you know, on, on-prem. Um, and really the overarching question is how, how can we help, you know, perhaps make this, this last upgrade uh, you may ever do, whether that is, you know, when you just did or when you're about to do, let's, let's see if we can make it your last. So a um, little history first. Um, so, you know, my first introduction to like SAS, uh, I was an intern on, on the help desk when I first heard of SAS. And so this was at my, my first company was a medical supply uh, company that got purchased by this rather large corporation, uh, in Columbus. Uh, I was in college at the time still. So, you know, I, uh, my background's in computer science. So, so a lot of like the general IT stuff was, was like new to me. Right. So we had this, uh, network outage, uh, luckily we did have two separate lines. So, you know, it was a blip more or less, but that blip, uh, was enough to bring down a mission critical app, uh, basically had to come down and reboot a lot of dependencies, a lot, a lot of dependencies. And, you know, some of those weren't available at the right time and, and so on and so forth. So it just wasn't able to get back up and running um, as quickly as it may have, should, you know, maybe you should have. So um, at that time, you know, our technology leaders started talking about SaaS. And um, I was like, man, that's super interesting. I didn't know that that stuff really existed. You know, we, we have someone else who's managing um, everything for us outside of maybe user like IAM um, uh, policies or um, just deployment in in general, you know. So uh, fun fact, we did find out the, we found the culprit. Uh, maybe y'all have seen this particular individual in the wild. Uh, this is the North American fiber seeking backhoe. Um, you know, primarily feeds on fiber optic uh, cables. Um, comes in many different, you know, color coats. This one is green. I think this one is a little bit more rare. I, I see a lot of the yellow ones. Those are a little bit more common. So um, if you've seen one, uh, beware, beware. Hide your cables. So, so yeah, what what is SAS, right? Um, I thought this was a really good a comic, XKCD, one of my favorites. Uh, you know, I've uh, the, the, the running joke is it's someone else's computer. Well, you know, how do we do that with just one computer? Well, there's a lot of caching. There's a whole lot of caching. And I hope you don't trip over, you know, the one cord that connects it all, right? Um, kidding. It, it's it's just a little fun. Uh, it's honestly, the, that one and Little Bobby Tables. If you haven't seen Little Bobby Tables before, just look it up. It's, it's phenomenal. Um, so SAS, you know, um, 
And on on site setting, you know, you're going to be responsible for the app data, runtime, any middleware OS, especially the patching and upgrading of all those, the physical replacement of those as well, uh, networking, uh, you know, and such. Um, IaaS, uh, so your cloud providers here, um, you know, they take, you know, some of that physical. Uh, they take away the physical stuff from you. So you're still managing the OS and the patching and upgrading, any middleware, the runtime data and applications. And then uh, from, from a platform uh, platform perspective, like a PaaS, um, you know, you're just managing your application deployment and then the data that's associated with that. Uh, so with SaaS, um, oh, and an important call out with, with IaaS as well is the security. It's not mentioned here, but the security aspect, you're, you're kind of managing this, you know, throughout in, in certain ways. In an IaaS perspective, uh, you'll have um, IAM, you know, like identity access uh, type type security management. You'll also have, you know, security groups or you know firewall rules, um, you know, access keys, that that sort of thing. PaaS a little bit uh, more like loose. You may have some networking involved. You may not. You, um, you may have identity. Uh, there as well. Um, on the SaaS side, um, uh, you know, in this case, trend would be managing everything for you with, with respect to, uh, you know, workload security, um, AKA deep security, but in the cloud. So at this point, you know, uh, to, to a large extent, SAS is relieving the pressure on sort of that human and financial resource, um, you know, of, of your enterprise or, or business so that you can concentrate time, effort, funding on, on really the effective operation of your core business. Uh, so in this case, you know, uh, deep security, you're, you're managing a manager, a database, your policies, um, deployment, all, all this stuff. Uh, with workload, you're, you're managing policies um, and, and deployment. You know, you don't have to worry about those upgrades anymore. Um, and it's, and it's cost effective. You know, we, we handle, you know, the scaling and everything. So along, you know, with <clears throat> what comes with this is, is really a change. Um, so I, this slide is kind of fun just because uh, it's very easy. This is a very easy slide, right? The key to change is to just let go of fear. Wow. That's just a, it's a platitudes, you know, about change. These platitudes about change are notwithstanding. So, you know, I think that a significant change to your business process infrastructure, and honestly, probably the most important, it's a cultural change, uh, will we'll always have that that level or a certain level of fear, uncertainty, and, and doubt, right? Um, and then having a solid plan and strategy certainly helps alleviate that. Um, you know, strategies look great on paper. Um, you know, ask me how I know. I've lived through some of these. And I'm also, as you, as you saw before, I'm a big Cavs fan, I'm a big basketball fan. Um, I, you know, Boston, I hope they pull it out. I really do. Uh, obviously, so I'm a Cavs man, that's why I think that. Um, you know, like look at the Los Angeles Lakers, uh, Lakers this year, and the last time they tried to have a super team, great team on paper. Did it translate to success? No. So, you know, one of the key challenges that uh, we faced, in, you know, uh, during our cloud journey, um, where applications are tough to move um, to the cloud sometimes because of tribal knowledge. You might have churn. You know, there, there's a plethora of reasons why why it's why it's difficult. Um, and what what happens, you know, the first step generally is sort of like a lift and shift that that um, that's like the first step to moving to moving to cloud, right? So, um, you know, how do you secure that? How do you secure that? There's a lot of times lack security rules um, if if you're a little you know if you're a little behind or you know if you're you're trying to move stuff. We don't know how it really works. So let's let's at least get it working. What do we need to do to get it work? Let's open ports. Let's do this. So. You know, anyone who has worked in the industry this long uh, enough will tell you that, you know, temporary, the longer the temporary rules and solutions remain in place, the more likely they are to become permanent. So when these workloads start to move, like, how do we, how do we secure them? Um, and this was one of the biggest challenges that, that we faced. And, and this ranged not just from like a peer security, you know, but also compliance and regulatory perspective as well. So the, the tools that we used on-prem, you know, would not necessarily translate that easily and, and some were kind of left behind. Um, so, and honestly, this is where cloud one really, really shines, spe you know, specifically workload security. So you're, you're you know, you're gonna get the same level of protection um, that you're getting today on-prem 
but you know, in the cloud managed, you know, for you. So it gives you time to, you know, evaluate every, you know, all the rest of your security posture instead of having to, to manage infrastructure, right? So um, especially if you want a mix of cloud native services and more traditional compute, um, you know, if you are leaving stuff on prem for a little bit, that you, that's fine. You can do a hybrid on-prem, you know, cloud and, and utilize cloud native services all in one console. That's really where the platform itself really shines because you end up not just getting access to workload security. You also get access to the rest of um, the cloud one platform. So, um, you know, why, why migrate? Um, some of these reasons I've I've talked about already. So you're going to get the latest features, you know, continuously. It's, you know, it's updated continuously for you. It's just done for you already. You're just worrying about deployment and policy management. It's infinitely scalable. We handle the scaling. We see an increase in workload and we need to scale. We'll do that. We manage that. Um, and we're moving that physical infrastructure costs and, and the maintenance that goes along with that. Um, I know there's questions around, you know, compliance um, and regulatory things. We're compliance certified PCI. ISO, SOC. Um, I have a slide later, I'll show you where our Cloud One regional data centers are at. Uh, I know one of the questions I always had on, on the other side, I know prior to me being a trend, was where is our data residing? Um, you know, GDPR, that sort of thing. Um, data privacy is huge. We, you know, um, I even have some data sheets on that we, uh, and we can share those. I have links to that in the presentation as well. And this helps, you know, we can help reduce some of the time spent on audit because we, we complete the audit ourselves, right? So uh, we can reduce some of that time gathering audit and compliance requirements. We can help there. Um, as far as availability, uh, availability is concerned, it's 24 by 7, 365. Uh, no, no rest, you know. Um, it's, it, it's also physically secure, uh, you know, cloud environment. So, you know, these are uh, physically secure data centers, you know, around the world and, and continuously monitored by, um, you know, some of the best staff that I, that I know. You know, I know some of them personally. Um, so everything that I've talked about thus far in a neat little table for you, um, you'll notice, uh, you know, as far as the actual runtime, you know, with the protection and vulnerability protection, security protection offering, um, both checkboxed because they're, they're the same. Just one is managed for you. The other is not. That's the only check that's missing from workload is the fact that you have, uh, with deep security, Monthly or quarterly, you know, you have these long-term support updates, which you have to manage and deploy, you know, to do that um, on the workload side, right? So it's a nice little uh, recap in chart form. So, you know, I was talking about, you not only get access to, um, you know, workload security, but you get access to the entire platform itself. And, and there, there's a suite of tools in here and services that can help um, alleviate some of that pressure on, on the cloud journey, right? So, you know, if you're starting to get into some of those more cloud native services, you know, containers, you're starting to utilize those. We have admission controllers, we have Kubernetes coverage as well. Um, you know, conformity, probably the biggest and, and best tool outside of, you know, your actual, you know, workload protection uh, product. Conformity is going to give you um, security posture information based on your, your cloud environment. Um, it, across multiple cloud providers, you know, um, you're going to get uh, feedback based on how your environment is configured against like well-architected frameworks, you know, so you'll be able to find um, if a, bu a bucket, a, a, you know, an object storage bucket is public, that shouldn't be public. Well, you know, we found that, you know, it, it gives you some feedback on uh, network you know, network rules, overly permissive rules, or, you know, identity uh, profiles, you know, you'll, you'll get that information and, and be able to resolve that. Um, you know, file storage security, if you're utilizing cloud bucket storage and, and you know, you're, you're allowing users to upload to these buckets or, you know, stuff that's not created in your environment, you're ingesting it. Um, you know, we can, we can scan that for anything troublesome. And the cool thing about that, by the way, is uh, it's metadata. It's just metadata. Um, we're not actually looking at the data that's inside of that. Um, you know, if, if you're a fan of um, IPS, uh, traditional IPS, you know, if you're familiar with tipping point, uh, we have that virtualized, you know, in the cloud as well. 
Um, application security, if you're utilizing, again, cloud native services to, to move applications after you've done some lift and shift, we have you covered there. Yeah, even if it's more traditional and it's lift and shift, you're covered there. It's three lines of code. Two, two lines of that is just authentication to the platform. That's it. The other one's an import, a library import. Um, and, and it's a RASP. So it, it runs outside of your, like uh, wraps around your application and, and protects it from, from threats, SQL injections, remote, uh, remote code executions. Um, you know, if you do a lot of development, you have third-party dependencies and you're, you wanna look at the vulnerabilities that are associated with those um, and get some feedback on, you know, a source composition analysis, you know, thanks you know, to a partnership with Sneak, we have that ability to, to, to give you feedback based on that. Um, it, along with licenses, I think that's really important too. You have licenses that are copy left, where if you include these, these libraries into your code and you publish that code uh, and it's a private repository, um, due to the license structure, you would have to publish that code if it's a copy left license. So that was something that we worried about a lot at, at my last place. Um, and then finally, the one we've been talking about, you know, a um, little bit here is, is workload to kind of complete complete the puzzle here. Um, and, and all of these services are integrated with, you know, our, our Vision One XDR platform as well. So if you have an operations staff that's interested in, in high quality, you know, events, um, to take all of these like sensor, these, these service sensors, right? These services, they send all of this data in, we filter that down for you and give you high quality alerts as to, as to what is going on in your environment and tie those together in the form of workbenches. Um, it's just super, super powerful, right? So what am I saying? I'm saying that we can satisfy, you know, key, key business needs here. Um, you know, we have discovery and, and visibility across multiple cloud providers. Um, and, and as I mentioned, we, we, we offer protection uh, with, with workload and, and then some, you know, um, across physical, virtual and container environments. You know, if you wanna do sort of like soft migrations, uh, you can, you can manage your cloud resources in your on-prem, you know, from the same console. That's amazing. That's really powerful stuff. Uh, the broadest support of um, legacy OSs you know, with um, with uh, virtual patching, you know, you have an old OS that's not receiving security updates anymore. We can protect that with with a virtual patch, right? Um, and as I was saying earlier about some of the re regulatory, you know, uh, requirements, uh, you know, compliance, GDPR, PCI, HIPAA, we can help you meet those requirements as well. And for my DevOps uh, folks, you know, I haven't forgotten about you, you know, I'm you have this, this idea across the platform, it's a complete detection and protection capability platform, right? Um, this is all backed by, uh, you know, our trend, our, our amazing, really our amazing trend research team. Uh, that's 60% of like all vulnerabilities in the past, like, you know, more than a few years have all been disclosed by, you know, the trend uh, trend research team and, and, you know, our zero day initiative. Like, if you haven't heard of that, look at that, you know, Pwn to own, yeah, look, look, look into that. That's, that's us, right? So really, really phenomenal work that they do and, and everything, you know, all of our products, the backbone of that is, is backed up by them. Um, all of, you know, this is an open API platform as well. So, you know, you want to integrate with them, um, go for it. You know, that's what we did. We automated um, plenty of things uh, with regards to workload, you know, if we, um, including like agent activation, which I'll, I'll show you an event-based task later in a video that I have on, on what we did with that. Um, some security as code, you know, for DevOps, we, we believe in that um, sort of the DevOps mantra and, and, and culturally, philosophically, you know, deployed at cloud scale. Um, and we integrate with other security tools if, if need be. I mean, the, the, the flexibility of the, the uh, and openness of our APIs, you know, can't be understated. So um, I mentioned this earlier. Um, here's where our, our data centers uh, lie. So we've got Canada, USA, UK, Germany. India, Singapore, Japan, and Australia. Um, I know that, like I said, for um, security compliance groups, um, legal teams, you know, risk officers, they, 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 you know, those folks are, are very interested in making sure that it resides where it should reside, depending on the country that you're doing business. We, we can offer you, you know, um, a solution for that, right? Um, something that's really cool too, flexible pricing options. Um, it runs the gamut, really. I, I was... I was kind of surprised when when I first uh, started working um, with Trend 
you know, at my at my last place. Um, I was surprised to see that they had marketplace offerings with the consumption agreements like that was that was becoming a really big deal for um, um, an enterprise as large as the one I was at, which was a fortune 20 company. So the fact that we had consumption agreements as an option was huge, absolutely huge. Um, you can also do annual there as well. You can do traditional PO for annual subscriptions. And, and you know, we do offer enterprise pricing as well. So yeah, very flexible in terms of the pricing model. I know that that's often a big question. Um, this is just going over our commitment to data privacy, security, and, and compliance. You know, um, so whether it's you know securing the data in a SaaS platform, you know, ensuring the compliance of that platform, and uh, you know, making sure that we, we meet the data privacy requirements. You know, we're committed to making that happen. Um, you know, it, I have kind of HIPAA just hanging out on the side there, so uh, I wanted to call that out because that was important to me at my last place. Well, we do have a BAA. Um, and, and through our documentation and the BAA, we, you know, we can help you meet those HIPAA, HIPAA requirements as well. So, I mean, really the last thing, uh, to, to kind of, uh, get into, right. Everything we talked about kind of answers those overarching questions from, from a high level, but really getting down to kind of like brass tacks, like, is it difficult? Like, is it, how hard is it? If you've ever migrated something, you know, from one place to another, you know, often it's a manual process. You have to manually export, you know, XML. Like <laughs> I remember having to do that, export XML and then import it in. And oh man, something happened with the XML. It's not reading. Oh, well, you know, that was a legacy XML thing. I don't know. You know, so it's like having multiple methods and mechanisms to, to move, I think is super, super important. Um, you can see some of the flexibility here, right? So we can do this. I'll be showing you walking through a GUI um, uh, migration, uh, but you can totally do this, you know, via script command line. You can do this um, using, um, you know, agent command line commands. And in, in, if you have automation software like Chef, Puppet, or Ansible, we, we can help you there. You know, we have a solution architecture team for, for any, any other complex or tricky situation, we can figure it out. They are talented people, talented people. Um, my hat's off to them, honestly. They're very wonderful to work with, just good people, um, very smart. Um, and the last one is sort of a mechanism. So this idea of migration control. So I'll show you some of these smart folders and event-based tasks. So, so the smart folders, if you don't use them today, like you can organize how these uh, computers as, as you see fit or, or these workloads, you know? So if you have a group of um, on-prem servers that um, are to be moved, like you can organize them and, and see the list. Okay, these are all the ones that we wanted to capture based on a filtered list, right? And, and these are, of course, the, the caveat is, you know, it, um, we have to be able to see them so they, they have to be listed in, in the deep security console. Um, typically there is an agent running, um, but if you have a, you know, you have a subset of hosts that these, we know we wanna move these first. You can totally put those in a group and kind of see the status and follow the journey, which I'll show you. And, and the last thing um, before I show you the video um, is this idea around event-based tasks. So I think this is a really powerful way. Uh, for example, when you, um, if you have gold images, or if you bake agents in, or depending on your deployment mechanism, you may have new servers or new lift and shift servers uh, coming online that may not have a policy assigned to them. But what we can ensure through an event-based task is that if they do uh, come up and the agent activates, but has no policy, we can automatically assign a policy, a base policy, um, you know, that, that at least offers some level of, of basic protection. And then you can, if you want, you can you know, potentially sort that into a computer group of like to be evaluated or, you know, to, to look at or something like that, that they give some indication that, hey, we should look at these and make sure that the base policy, uh, or it doesn't need any more than a base policy. Maybe there is a more granular or a lockdown policy we'd like to have, but at least right now it has a has a base policy. So uh, that was something we utilized at MLS Place as well. So um, so in in practice here, um, I'll, I'll play this video. I'm just going to talk throughout. So there's no, there's no sound. Um, and I'm going to, maybe might try, um, pausing at certain parts. So this is the first thing I'm in the deep security console at this point. And the first thing we have to do is get an API key, um, from workload 
uh, security inside of uh, Cloud One there. So you can see that I have a migration key um, already from a previous video. So I'm just going to delete it and show you. Um, see, I click the wrong thing in terms of names. So I'm going to struggle through naming this migration key here for you. And then we do have a deep security migration role already. For whatever reason, I hit cancel, not sure why. So you get to see me struggle again, create this migration key. It's, it's very simple. It was a joke. Um, so uh, migration key, we're just going to select the deep security uh, migration role. Again, that's default in workload security for you already prepared, gives you everything you need. And you'll see that it spits out the API key for you. And we'll go ahead and copy that to clipboard and we'll paste it in here. <clears throat> Now, the first thing that comes up um, for you know this task wizard here, this migration wizard, is you can see uh, migrating common objects. So if you have file lists, you like exclusion lists, you have port lists, um, a plethora of things you can move over. But we're just going to move over um, policies first. So uh, you see, I got all policies. We're going to click migrate there. And um, you'll see throughout the video here that there's uh, various statuses that come up. You'll also see, um, you won't see any failures here, but this is where they'll also uh, appear. Um, so I'm just clicking refresh that you can see my migration requested. You see it's now migrating the policies over and you can see that it's now migrated those policies over. Um, you can also do that manually, by the way, if you if there are issues, you can export those policies from deep security, the deep security manager and import them. Um, so you can see here, the base policy has uh, the, the local host name or the host name from the um, previous Deep Security Manager. That's how you can tell that they've been imported. Uh, those are the newer ones uh, that are on the workload security side already. So from here, <clears throat> I'm going to show you um, migrating some of the agents. So we've got you know 50 agents in here. We're going to move 15 of them. And, and what we're going to do uh, with these 15 is we're going to migrate them with their like current assigned policy. Uh, and, and how we're gonna do that is, you know, while it's since it's already been migrated, I'll, I'm gonna show you that you can select that um, like imported or migrated policy here. You can also use that assigned migrated policy above it. But I wanted to show you the policy list. Um, if there's any like proxy information or anything, you know, you can um, edit that there as well. So. Um, we'll hit migrate here, and, and that will begin the uh, migration pro um, uh, process. So this kind of gets into some of the smart folders that I was talking about. So I have a to be moved and I have a moving, which has some moving statuses in there. So it'll be move requested and moving. Any of those statuses, uh, if we have computers in any of those status, uh, statuses, they'll appear here. Um, and, and here's my like to be moved list. So you notice, you know, out of like, the the 50 we're going to move 25 right now um so you see move requested is refer, uh, reflected here we're going to take the other 10 we haven't moved yet and and we're going to assign um a, the new policy or what i say new is but like the the workload security um linux policy for linux servers we'll, we'll apply that uh, so when these migrate over they'll be assigned the workload security uh default linux policy okay so we started that here um, and we'll show that move is requested for all of those. So, you know, while those are moving, uh, we're going to jump over to event based tasks. This is sort of that baseline um, level of protection. And we're going to do this by agent uh, initiated act activation. So, as long as the agent is on, on the box, um, it will reach out to uh, the deep security manager and activate and and then we will assign a base policy um, based on that activity um, like i said earlier if you wanted to put this into a group where hey you know let's evaluate this further if it needs a more granular um, or stringent policy we can do that um, it, because by the way all we're doing in this migration is we are uh, switching the uh, manager that the uh, agents reach out to right so Right here, what I'm trying to do with um, the event-based task is we have plenty of options here. I'm going to use computer name. Um, I'm getting a little specific here in that um, we're going to jump back to deep security and we're pulling the, the name field back. You can see I have on-prem workloads two here. Um, that's very specific, but you can just leave it wildcard for matching any system. Um, I'm going to demonstrate it using the on-prem workloads two uh, with two asterisks um, 
you know, if any, if that, any of that text is found, we're, we're good to go. So again, we're just pointing the agents that are already on these boxes to the SaaS version uh, or to the uh, deep security manager in the cloud, AKA workflow security. Um, you can see if we go to computers here uh, that we have some of the uh, agents um, or, and, or workloads have now moved over and they're starting to be managed by um, workload security at this point. So I have a list of, uh, is it activated? Cool. Um, I have, is it activated and does it have a policy? Sweet. You can see six there. Uh, nothing in from on-prem, uh, simply because we're going to edit that um, and just change that to, we're going to make sure that the display name can, um, can, contains on-prem, and then we'll we'll see that list get, get updated. So you'll see that we have 25. Um, these are all of the, the first machines that we selected for, uh, for migration. Um, and we have some that are listed as is not activated. Um, so uh, this now has gone ahead. I, I did select the um, workload uh, two machines in there. They're on their way as well. You can see that some of them are now listed. We have 47 um, up from 25. So I sent over 22 of the workload two. Uh, we are now managing all of the, the first batch of, of agents and servers. Um, and you can see that now uh, the workloads to have that base policy assigned to them from that event-based task. I, when I moved them, I did not select a, a policy. Um, they came over and uh, that event-based task assigned the base policy. Um, so that, that very, very powerful tools and, and can be very flexible based on how you would like to migrate um, your, your agents and workloads, right? Um, so was, was happy to go through some of that. I know, um, I don't know how, how many uh, people use some of those uh, features, but they, they can be very, very powerful. Um, I think that starts, yep. Okay, so for your consideration, right? If you're interested in any of this stuff, you can try out Cloud One, uh, Cloud One workload security at, at no cost. Um, you know, cloud1.trendmicro.com. Go try it out. Um, you know, we we do this um, all the time. Uh, just go register. It's super easy. You don't have to talk to anyone. You just go do it. I think that's what makes Trend amazing. You don't have to schedule a meeting to go try it. Just go try it. It's there. Cloud1.trendmicro.com. It's there. Um, you know, during migration, we provide both deep security and cloud one licenses, right? To help to help ease any any pressure or pain points you have during that. And then, you know, I talked about some of that like soft migration. If if you know you wanted to um, still manage a deep security manager, but you wanted to move it to um, you know a cloud provider, you can do that. We we have ways to uh, deploy uh, you know uh, the quote unquote on prem version of deep security to, to a cloud environment. So if you uh, have requirements or need to manage it that way, we can help you out. So coming in, you know, the last few slides here, um, you know, industry reports, we're, we're highly rated, you know, um, we've been doing this for a little bit and, and we're, we're pretty good at it, honestly. Um, you know, Trend Micro is and will continue to be a strong security partner you know, for, for you and, and anyone else um, offering world-class security for, for cloud and in hybrid cloud environments. Um, you know, I harped on this a little bit earlier, but um, save the best kind of for last. There's actually something maybe a little better. I'll give Yvonne, okay? She likes the last slide and, and I know why it's fine, but this one's really cool. Why? Because not only are you gonna get access to, you know, workload security, um, their first 30 days free because that's you know it's, it's the entire platform it's not just workload it's the entire platform and we have always free tiers in these things so what's included in those free bucket scanning we give you you know if it's under 20 file scan per hour you get that that's for free free 99 that's great it's really cool stuff i don't know that there's any you know product on the market today that does that really i don't um Cloud accounts with with under 250 resources per hour. That's conformity, you know. So it gives you that posture management, um, the the cloud security posture management, you know, always free. Um, open source security. You, your first 15 projects every day, you know. We'll give you some insights there. And then network layer protection, detection, and threat disruption. First 10 gigs of inspected traffic for each month. 
those are always free tiers. So free for, uh, feel free to use them, right? Utilize them. 